Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father P.J., good morning. Good morning, Father. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we may be sustained by the intercession of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, that as through them you gave your church the foundations of her heavenly office, so through them you may help her to eternal salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this week, obviously, at the end, we have the solemnity of Peter and Paul. However, at the beginning of this week, we have an interesting personality, may I say that, you know? So, we have St. Irenaeus, bishop, martyr, and doctor of the church. And also we have a very interesting connection between St. Irenaeus and St. Peter and Paul as well. That's you know? correct. So St. Saint, Saint Irenaeus, I, I have a deep affection for St. Irenaeus in part because I'm the youngest son and the youngest grandson of a real big family. So like we're here in 2023 and my grandfather, not my great grandfather, my dad's dad um, and my, my mom's dad, were both born before 1900. Oh. So, so, so one family in the span of just three generations can really span like six if people space their births out enough, right? Mm -hmm. Well, St. Irenaeus is like that for the early church. So St. Irenaeus is the last living connection that we have to the apostles. Oh, So St. Irenaeus was a disciple of St. Polycarp of Smyrna. Polycarp Irenaeus is from Smyrna. He's the bishop later on in, in, in Lyon. But um, so, so, so Irenaeus is from Smyrna and Polycarp was a disciple of St. John the Apostle. So Irenaeus is the last person that we know of that was taught by somebody who was taught by the apostles themselves. And this shows itself even in his, in his uh, priestly life and ministry. Um, toward the end of his life, there's a, a controversy over the date of Easter uh, recalling that St. John, of course, was sent to Ephesus, which was uh, way further west from, from, from where the, the faith was sort of headquartered in, in Rome and Antioch and, 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 and Jerusalem. Um, early on, there came to be different practices around how you calculated the date of Easter and how long the fast before Easter should take place. And so Pope Victor called Irenaeus to Rome because Irenaeus was a great proponent of of the church of Rome as the arbitrators, the ones who, who, who gave the final decision uh, when there were disputes in the church. And so Victor calls them to Rome to, to participate in a debate and they can't uh, come up with a common language to have the debate in Irenaeus and the people that far uh, West are speaking Greek, not Latin. The people further East are speaking Latin. They can't talk to each other. So the way that the, 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 the Pope Victor validates Irenaeus's position he asks him to celebrate mass for him. And wow. he, he can't like uh, by translation understand every word that he's saying, but he watches the care and the reverence with which he celebrates the Eucharist. And this so convicts him of Irenaeus, Irenaeus's sanctity that he admits that there can be more than one practice around how we calculate feast days. It's incredible. How is the fulfillment of the word disciple, mm -hmm. disciple, disciple. Finally, it's, consistency and continuity about the main legacy from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. You know, a, a disciple is <clears throat> one who is zealous after. And so it's the difference, you know, I think most of us can remember this in school. There were moments when we had to study something because it's what teacher asked us to do. And there were moments where an idea or a new thing just caught our attention so much we couldn't not do it. That's what a disciple is meant to be. They're so caught in this case, not by an idea, but by a person the person of the Lord Jesus, they can't, they can't not Jesus anymore. Wow. And so Irenaeus winds up as, as, as the Bishop in Lyon. And he, he's a very important character in the early church, um, uh, in his struggle against heresy. Now, heresy is a word that a lot of people, uh, it make pe makes people nervous these days because it means saying uh, you think somebody's wrong and it does. And clearly the church is the best entity equipped to determine what counts as okay in the church and not like it would be an absurd, you know, you wouldn't have like Muslims determining Jewish dietary <laughs> law or something. Right. Uh, but, but, but because people don't like the position the church takes on things, they want to be able to find some way to kind of 
backdoor loophole your way into changing church teaching. And that's that's just not how this has ever worked. So Irenaeus famously writes against the heresies where he he lays out all of the errors that he's aware of running around in the early church. And 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 he doesn't simply sort of scold or berate or, or villainize the people who hold these strange positions. He shows where they've made the mistake, the truth that they're trying to maintain, but where they've made the mistake. And then he says, it's true. The Valentinians got this thing right, and the Gnostics got this other thing right, and the Montanists have this thing right. But you can get all of the right things from each of those groups and none of the weirdness in the Catholic Church. And how wow. do you know what constitutes the Catholic Church? The Bishop of Rome. You and go I'll, to the Bishop of Rome. Sorry. The, the symbols and representation from St. Irenaeus, light and, tor light and torch, excuse me, and book as well. And obviously, as you described, light means clarification. Clarity. Let's, let's move in and aside any kind of darkness, confusion. So very wisely, very wisely guy, you know? Claro. I mean, that's, that's, that's what he's doing. Is he's bringing clarity, uh, clarity to the church's teaching. He also, uh, of course, then witnesses uh, to the faith by his life. And, and you can still, you know, the, 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 the cathedral in which St. Irenaeus served, or the church in which St. Irenaeus served, is still there in France. Oh, wow. So you can go to Lyon. Now, I want you to think about this. He died in 202. So you can go to a church, not in Jerusalem, in France. France. Wow. That has been there since the third century. See, see so, so when we talk about the church really being this old, these practices really being this old, people defending seven sacraments and monastic life and three orders, uh, priests, bishops, and deacons, uh, it, it's all there from the very beginning. And, and, and the central role of the Bishop of Rome, not as uh, the supreme governor of every other bishop or something like that, you know, like we're all branch managers and he's the CEO. Uh, the, the Pope is not Steve Jobs, right? Um, uh, or Jeff Bezos. Uh, but but rather the the great bridge builder, the pontifex who takes who 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 takes discord and conflict and heals it. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Hi, this is Trent Horn from Catholic Answers. Has anyone ever told you that they believe abortion is wrong, except in the case of rape? It's easy for pro-lifers to come off as uncaring towards women when they talk about this issue, especially if they only say rape accounts for 1% of abortions. That's true, but more should be said. Strongly affirm that rape is an awful crime and that women are victimized when others don't take this crime seriously. Some countries execute rape victims in honor killings, which is barbaric. In our country, we don't execute rapists, much less rape victims, and yet we execute the child who was conceived in rape, the other innocent party. Shouldn't we oppose acts of violence against rape victims and the children conceived through rape? This has been Trent Horn with a Catholic Answers Pro-Life Minute. For my free pro-life booklet that will make you better at defending human life, visit whywearepro-life.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from The Ball Team, providing construction services for commercial, industrial, medical, and education projects. Ball Team can assist with pre-construction, site selection, design build, project management supervision. Buildwithball.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Speaking about St. Peter and St. Paul, back in my mind, St. Peter Basilica in Rome, the two huge standard men facing with a property and confidence looking at the entire church like St. Peter and St. Paul. Why these two guys have been in a remarkable role in our church? So Peter and Paul occupy uh, a kind of primacy uh, after the Blessed Virgin um, amongst the saints in the church be because of their unique role in bringing the faith to the rest of the world. Uh, Paul, the great apostle to the Gentiles, and, and Peter, uh, the, 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 great, um, uh, the great apostle to and of the Jews and, uh, and the first pope of the church. Right. And um, if we explore one half keys, mm -hmm. and the other half sword. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 
which <laughs> which which is it is double sided as it were right both yep. because Paul died by the sword and because in important ways he he preached as though with a sword not calling for war but 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 but, but because the word of the lord uh is sharper than the two edged sword St. Augustine says this about them. So feast days in the early church, and this feast has been kept in common since at least the third century. Um, uh, the, the feast days in the early church were, of course, to mark the death days of martyrs. Birthdays, the way we keep them now, were relatively unknown at the time. It was only kept by royalty. Like ordinary people didn't have birthdays. Ordinary people didn't have calendars. And so, um, so, so, so it was the death days that were kept. But, but Peter and Paul... Everybody knew they didn't die on the same day. But Augustine says, although they died on separate days, we keep their feast as one because they were one in faith, one in life, and so one in death. Wow. It's a unique form that we can certainly profess our faith, you know? Well, and, they, and each of them are commemorated in different ways throughout the church's year. So we have this feast that is like their proper feast day. This is the day that is theoretically the day of their deaths, even though we know that it's not precisely, but we also have uh, the, 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 the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, we have the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter, and then we have the Feast of the Dedication of their Basilicas, of the churches named after them, St. Peter's and St. Paul Outside the Walls. Um, and then in Rome itself, there are other feasts because you have you know, St. Peter in Chains, the, 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 the places where these events actually happened. But, 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 but the point here, right, is that, is that these two men occupied a role, an outsized role in the life of the early church. You know, Paul wrote like half of the New Testament. Peter wrote large portions of the New Testament and was deeply influential on what, what we call the Gospel of Mark. And so, 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 so they, they simply, we wouldn't have the church without the foundation of these two princes of apostles. In the same way, the preface for this solemnity, obviously the same Initial part, it is truly written, just our dear salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, for us, in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remains of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. So, so again, playing on the doublets, just like just like Saint Paul would in his writing, right? So, not pe- fighting, not, not rivalry, no, 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 not no. rivalry. C- compare and contrast, right? Exactly. So, 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 so Peter foremost, and that's li- that's that's a literal word here. The first to have done confess the faith uh, there on the on the on the beach of Caesarea Philippi, right? Correct. You were the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Paul, it's outstanding preacher. This was always the anxiety, right? Like on one level, Paul was much better suited to, to Peter's job than Peter was. But that isn't how God set this up. God set up the relatively unlettered fisherman to be the one who had to organize the group from the outset and, and, and make things work. And he set Paul to be its spokesman. Paul would be a better spokesman than Peter of halting speech, much like Moses and Aaron. Um, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant Israel, so recognizing the Jewish roots here and, and, and that Peter in important ways stays close to that, even though he wasn't a professional Jew, he was just an ordinary Jew. Paul was a professional Jew. It was literally his job. And yet he's the one, the most Jewish of the Jews who got sent to the Gentiles. Wow. And so each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ. And revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. So long before, um, like literally millennia before, <laughs> corporations were talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. The church understood unity and diversity is its primary strength. On that first day of Pentecost, it wasn't that everybody spoke the same language. It's that people spoke other languages and yet were able to be understood so that the confusion of Babel was finally restored. In Peter and Paul, you have two very different men who didn't get along super well in life, whom we know struggled with each other, and yet who recognized the work of the same spirit 
in in each of their lives and ministries and so and so utilized one another uh, to, to build up the gospel, which is why they were able to share in a common death, which they offered together to the one Lord. Definitely men of commitment, you know, and a man of commitment in the name of Jesus Christ means faithful to me, mm -hmm. be faithful to me. And in a remarkable manner, both have an, a, an a different parallel life, but at the same time, remarkable in each unique way. That's I mean, that's exactly Peter wasn't, right. Peter wasn't a, a good preacher, but probably another pastoral approach than the good preacher as St. Paul. Well, and, and, and you know what sort of what counts as good changes in context. The right preacher for this congregation isn't the right preacher for that one. The right administrator for this community isn't the right administrator for that one. Um, and, and, and this struggle we continue to have today in parishes. Like you, you can have Absolutely. a good priest who's just a bad fit for, for this parish, a good parish who's a bad fit for, the, for this particular priest. Um, and, and, and so the church continues to struggle with this unity and diversity even now. But when we're at our best, we're comfortable with the diversity because it's not a threat or a challenge to the one spirit. Nothing can ultimately get in the way of what Jesus has done in his people. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Hi, this is Trent Horn from Catholic Answers. Has anyone ever told you abortion should be legal because nobody knows when life begins? But just as you wouldn't destroy a building if there's a chance an innocent person was still inside, we shouldn't destroy the life in the womb if there's a chance it's a human life. However, it turns out this is not a chance issue. Since the unborn are growing, they must be alive. And because they have human parents and human DNA, they must be human. And unlike sperm or egg, human embryos and fetuses are whole organisms who, like us, just need nutrition and the right environment to continue developing. That's why biologists agree that at fertilization, a new individual member of the human species or a human being begins to exist. This has been Trent Horn with a Catholic Answers Pro-Life Minute. For my free booklet that will make you better at defending human life, visit whywearepro-life.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid. Afraid Iowa Catholic Radio. I like to use in the same way the second reading from this solemnity of St. Peter and Paul. In this time, it's St. Paul writing in the second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 6 to 8, 17 to 18. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it, and I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's very interesting, Father, in this uh, colloquial name it, Pauline theology. Mm -hmm. How is the mix it between love, tender, but exhortation? Let us back to the nature of Jesus Christ himself. Let us back to Jesus and a consistently exhortation in terms of faith, but never lose, never lose the tender and kindness language. So, so this is almost certainly the last thing that Paul wrote, at least that we still have. Okay. And, and so, so you can hear this in the way that he's talking about himself. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He knows that he's drawing to his own natural conclusion here, but he also says and does things I know I wouldn't, and I suspect most people wouldn't, because it just seems too brave. So he says, I'm already being poured out like a libation. Libations were, of course, offerings of alcohol. Alcohol were, was hard to produce, just like it is now, so it's costly. And if you pour it out on the ground or on an altar, you, like, you can't lick it up. It's wasted, right? 
So it's a sacrifice. So I, Paul, am already being poured out like a sacrifice. And the time of my departure is near at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Well, we might say something like that on our deathbed. I've, li- I've lived a good life. I'm, I'm ready to go. But, but then he says, from now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. Now, most of us would say, that's the sin of presumption. How can you possibly know what's going to happen, right? It's not an expression of pride on Paul's part. And the language he's using here is deliberate. The just judge, the judge who judges justly, who gives to each according to uh, what he deserves. It's not that Paul deserves heaven, the crown, the, the prize. It's that he's been given the prize already. He's sharing in it even now, which is why he can say later on, and I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. He knows he's going to be killed. Wow. Perfectly. So, so, so he's not talking about the actual lion, even though there are Christians being torn apart by lions, probably outside of his prison cell. He's not talking about being saved from the sword. He's talking about being saved from sin. It's better for him to die broke in prison as a Christian than it was to live the way he was before he knew Jesus. It's not remarkable, man, how he had been describing in a delightful and sweetest manner the suffering. So invite us in a contagious manner to suffering with pleas mm. to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's not, this is not resignation. It's, this is something far more profound. It's, it, it's participation. Because he's, you know, to, to him, uh, nothing is worth Jesus. Jesus is worth everything. And so his life in Jesus is worth all the rest. So, 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 so death is gain here, not because life is bad, but because so long as he has Jesus, it doesn't matter if he's alive or dead. He'll live. Wow. So I think, you know, as, as we keep this feast uh, this week, it, it, it's a bit of a throwback, right? Um, it feels almost like we're back in Easter tide and reading all of those wonderful passages from the Acts of the Apostles. But I think it's important for us to have our eyes open to, uh, to, 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 the, to the places, to the Gentiles of today, to the people that we're being called to preach the gospel to today. Paul, ill-equipped, um, unprepared, uh, the least of all the apostles uh, as one born early, uh, prematurely, right, sent to preach to the Gentiles. Where are we being sent to preach? To people who've not yet heard the word or who heard it and thought it sounded nutty or who didn't have a very good presentation of it or who've never met a Christian. Yeah, right. Who've never met a Christian who was really so convinced of Jesus, nothing else mattered. And if I'm not that person right now, how can I get there? How can I fall in love so profoundly? Nothing else matters to me as much as Jesus. And this, at the same time, the great humanity from Peter, or St. Peter, very two years, that he denied Jesus. And then he preferred to die in the opposite manner that his Savior and Redeemer did. That is also the recognition, the indignity of the human being versus the dignity of the delegation from God about our final encounter with him. I know that sometimes I experience this as a priest. I'm sure you do too, Father, where you have uh, somebody who's been married and divorced and the divorce hurt them so badly. They say, I- I'm never going to get married again. I'm never going to mess around with this again. I'm never, because I'm never going to let myself get hurt that badly again. Right. Right. Now, particular circumstances, particular people's lives, um, that may well be a, a prudent decision. I'm not making a judgment on that. Right. But there's a but there's a version of this in the faith here. And this is what St. Peter represents for us. He knows what a failed marriage is like, and he's never going to do that again. But he's going to be as faithful to his marriage as he can. Wow. It is it would be better for him to be dead than to fail in fidelity. And that and that fundamentally is what's being held out to us here by both Peter and Paul. Life with Jesus is worth everything, even our own death. 
approaching our very fruitful season from being not afraid. Could you please send us with your blessing? May the passion of the Lord Jesus and the merits and prayers of the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, grant that whatever good you do or suffering you endure, heal you all of your sins, help you to grow in holiness, and bring you to everlasting life, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be not afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Go forward and be not afraid.